If you want to learn how to create an awesome functional 3D printed box like this one here with a moving hinge that is print in place, stick around. That's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. Jumping right in, we are going to create our box by coming down to create box and I'm going to choose the XY plane. On this XY plane, I'm going to create this and make this 74.5 by 74.5. You can follow along at any size that you're looking for. This is just the size of box that I need to create today. We're going to do a simple enter. Over here on the right screen us our dimensions. I'm going to make this 80 millimeters tall and say OK. The next step is going to be splitting this into a top and bottom. The easiest way to do that is to construct a mid plane through the top and through the bottom and say, okay, there we have it right there. Nice mid plane. And then to use our split body for this. And then our splitting tool is going to be that plane say, okay, now I've got, if I come over here, top bottom, perfect. Creating the hinges is really, really simple. I don't, it's not a hard, process to do. It's just a little bit confusing if you've never done it before. So I'm going to jump over here. This is the front of my box, which is actually going to end up being the side when I'm done. Um, and if I wanted to make it the front, I could just jump over here to the right. No big deal. So I'm going to create a sketch and I'm just going to choose the bottom half of my box. I'm going to draw a line that comes through the center. I'm going to make this way longer than it needs to be. I just need that there for designing the rest of this. I'm going to use a circle and I want my circle to be five millimeters. This is going to be the inside of my circle. Um, so five millimeters and we'll set that there. And now I need to use our sketch dimension and I'm gonna make this twice the length away. So right now we're at 17, I'm gonna make this 10. This is gonna give me enough clearance as I'm trying to build the rest of this hinge. Um, after that, we're going to use an offset. We're going to offset this by 0.3 millimeters, which will give us a nice gap or clearance. I've seen people do this at 0.2 or 0.25. I don't like to mess around with it. Just go to 0.3. It's plenty tight as I'm still able to use this hinge. We'll say enter. And then I'm going to create one more circle. And this circle, I want it to be, uh, we'll set it at like 15 millimeters. But what I really want to do is grab our sketch dimensions and I'm going to grab the inside of our hinge and the outside of our hinge and I'm going to make this exactly five millimeters and say enter. So there I've got the basis of my hinge. The next step is I'm going to create a line and I'm going to come down here anywhere on the bottom of the sketch. It doesn't matter where I set this line. Click here and I'm going to pull up until I get to the very edge of the circle. And you'll know when you're there because it'll snap in with a little with a little circle and that's what we're looking for. So it gives us that nice tangent that we're looking for. Now on the top, we're going to run into an issue because I'm working with the bottom of the box. I need to design this uh, basically and do the best we can. We're going to run into some issues that you'll see here in just a second. So I'm going to get as close as we can here. Again, pull down, find that tangent and set that. Now using our sketch dimensions, I want this to be 45 degrees. So I'm going to grab this line and this line here and make this 45 degrees and say enter. This is the angle that I'm comfortable printing when I take this top half and fold it over and I can print at a 45 degree angle on both sides. It'll come off at a 45. Now this top section is going to give me a fit. I, I just kind of already know that. So I'm going to grab this line on the box, come out to here and it's going to look like it's going to work. It's, everything's going to basically feel good. We'll go down to 45, hit enter and oh no, now we've got a problem. So I'm just come out here, grab the end of this, and it'll actually tell you when it snaps in place. It'll give you a nice little X. Uh, sometimes you have to zoom in a little bit to get that right there. And so now I'm at least crossing that. So I've got everything set up the way I need. There's my hinge. It's built. It's ready to go. Now I just need to do some simple extrudes, and that's where the fun begins. So with this, we are going to start with the bottom. So I'm going to turn off my top. I only want to be looking at the bottom. 
of my box. And I'm gonna grab, do an extrude, and I need every one of these parts for this to work. And so what I need to do is, I don't wanna write on this edge because I wanna do some decorative stuff with this edge when I'm done. I wanna push that in. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna come and say, we'll do an offset of 10 millimeters. And we better make that a minus 10, it looks like, just to make sure we get to the right side. And you'll see where I'm starting this is actually right here. And so I'm gonna make this 20. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna make this 15. So we'll make this 15 and say, okay, leave it on join. So there's the first set of our section of our hinge. The next section, we need to come over here, turn our sketch back on. And we need to do the exact same thing we just did. Grab every single one of these parts and do an extrude. Now, the difference is instead of using the offset, I'm gonna to go to the object and I'm going to rotate this to this side here. And I'm gonna select oh, this side of our box. And if I were to do this, it would just start here on the edge. Again, I don't want that. I want to move the offset minus 10 millimeters again, and we're gonna make this 15. And say, okay. There's the basic section of it. I do need to grab one more section. I need the middle part of our hinge. So I'm gonna come over here and grab this section here, this section here. And if I just pull it across, I'm gonna run into all sorts of issues. So what I need to do is one more time, offset of minus 10. And then when I pull this across, I just have to cut through there. I don't have to go all the way to the other side, just cut into it a little bit and say join. And there is the bottom hinge all built out for us. We are done. So we can say, okay, looks great. The next step is to add our top on and we're gonna turn our bottom off. And we're gonna do the opposite of that. And so we're gonna grab this section here and do an extrude. So this one here and here. If we notice, this is the middle part of our hinge. This is the gap or the spacer that I'm gonna use when printing this to make sure that everything uh, gives us a nice amount of clearance. And depending on your printer, you may have to make this a little bigger. You could go a little smaller. Again, I like 0.3, it's been pretty safe. So I know that I need to do another offset and I need to offset this by 10 plus 15. And then I need to give myself a little more wiggle room. So I'm gonna go to 25.5 on that. And when I turn over here, you'll see where this is gonna start. Uh, again, sorry, make this a negative. And we should see that it's gonna start kind of out here in the middle, which is what we're looking for. And I don't know exactly how far I can, need to go. That's fine, we don't have to be perfect. What we need to do is turn on our bottom and we're gonna see, oh, I'm cutting into it here. So we're gonna back off, there's even. So I'm gonna go to 23 and then add that half a millimeter back in. And now I've got a half a millimeter, half a millimeter gap here, one half a millimeter gap here. And before I hit join or do anything else, I need to turn the bottom back off and say join. If I don't do that, everything's gonna get stuck together and it's gonna be very frustrating. So there is the basics of having this together. And if I wanna check this and make sure everything's working, I'm gonna go inspect, do a section analysis, just grab this line here and pull out. And I should see that if I move this right, I've got gap, a gap and a gap and a gap and a gap. So it looks like everything is working perfectly there. Now, if you notice one thing, we have another problem. Everything is solid, so we've gotta fix that. Uh, in order to do that, we actually need to go back in time. And in doing this, sometimes it breaks everything we just did. That's okay, it's easy to fix uh, a second time. So we're gonna pull this all the way back to here to where we have our solid box. I'm gonna do two things. I don't like that it's a solid square, I think it looks kinda ugly. So I'm gonna grab the top, grab the bottom, and I am gonna add a two millimeter chamfer to that. And it looks pretty good. Say okay. Um, we're gonna select this whole thing. We'll come in and shell this at two millimeters and say okay. Now when we come back to this side, everything should be back working how it's supposed to. We've got that in there and we are ready to go. The next thing that we need to do is we need to open this up. 
Uh, and if you want to double check that this works, I can just come in here, uh, click on our section analysis, hit edit, and you'll see, oh, yep, it isn't in fact actually shelled. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off. Here's our box. Now I need to create two components. I've got a top component and a bottom component. So using this assembly, I'm gonna create two components by choosing from bodies. Select the top one, select the bottom one and say, okay. Now what we'll see is we have two components over here. In those components, we have the bodies that we can turn on and off. The next step is using this joint. So I'm gonna select the joint and you're gonna see, hey, component one. So I wanna find component one. So I'm gonna turn off component two. And where does this move? Right now it's moving right here. Um, and then in component two, I need to turn that one on, turn this one off. I need to select this section here. And now when I turn this on, you'll see, oh no, it kind of broke and moved everywhere. That just kind of happens. So what we're gonna do is select this, drag it back to where it needs to go. Uh, looks like we gotta go 11.5. And this is why it's important to know exactly where everything goes and how to get everything back uh, in place. Um, it still looks like it's a little bit out of spec. So let's see if we can go, maybe it needs to go 11.75. There we go. There it looks centered. Our box looks like it lined back up. Um, Everything seems like it's in place. Okay, so now we've got that. The next part I wanna do is actually turn this box on its side. Just come over here to the right side. And I'm gonna open this box, 180 degrees. Oh, a little bit too far, 180. And now we have our box ready to go. It's done. Uh, at this point, we could print this, it'll print great, but I wanna go one step further. So if you made it this far, Hang in there. I'm gonna show you how to make a snap in place uh, clasp or um, little clip for this. So I'm gonna jump to this front side and I'm gonna make this the top of my box. And it doesn't matter which side you choose, you just can choose either of them and go with it. Okay, so I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna create a sketch on this front plane. I'm gonna grab this and it doesn't matter where I put this because we're gonna move it. And I'm gonna make this, um, we are gonna make this, 20 millimeters by 16 millimeters. Uh, we're gonna say enter, and then I'm gonna lock it in place. I'm gonna use our center pointer, our midpoint command. I'm gonna choose the top of this box and the top of this box, and it should snap right there. Uh, the only problem is it kind of locks it in place, which is fine, but what we need to do is grab this triangle, that's the midpoint um, section, and just say delete. This is now gonna allow me to select all of the edges and move it. Um, so I set this at 16, I'm gonna move this eight millimeters, uh, splitting that right in half, give us a nice clean look and say, okay. Now we've got that there, we can finish this sketch, uh, turn our sketches back on. I'm gonna do an extrude of 2.5. I don't need this sticking out too super far, but I want it to look pretty good. Say okay. And then if I really wanna make it look good, we're gonna grab a chamfer, click on this, and we're gonna make this a 2.5 and say okay. So there is, that looks pretty good. Now on this backside, we need to create another design. So we're gonna choose uh, to create a sketch. We're gonna choose that piece there. And we're gonna create the little tab that actually goes into the other side. And on this side, we are going to choose a rectangle. And I like to make my rectangles eight, and then I'll go ahead and say tab by four. It's gonna give me a really good size. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna use this midpoint, select this top line, select that line, snaps it in place. We're gonna come and grab the midpoint um, constraint, and we're just gonna delete that. And then we're gonna move this down. Um, at this point, it should be eight. So I'm gonna move this down two millimeters. Um, and it should center us up pretty good. Move, and if you grab this, I know you just kinda of have to trust this, but to make sure you get the right handle, grab it, pull it down two millimeters, double check that it looks like in the center, which it does, say okay. We're gonna grab this, 
finish sketch, do an extrude of 1.5 millimeters. We know that our shell is two millimeters, so I'm gonna make this 1.5. If you're keeping track, that's only gonna leave us 0.5 millimeters on the other side. It's okay, we're gonna make sure that this all works and looks really good. Say okay. Now we've got our little nub that's going to fit in the slot we're gonna create on the other side. Now, right now this isn't gonna work. It's just kind of ugly and doesn't work. We're gonna make this functional uh, by doing kind of the opposite of what we do on the other side and do a chamfer. And we're gonna make this 1.5. Gives us a nice clean chamfer look and say, okay. So we are done on that side. Now we need to come to this front side or to the bottom here. And we are going to create one more sketch we're gonna just duplicate exactly what we did and just pull that chamfer the opposite section. So grab this, go eight by four, hit enter. And then we are gonna midpoint this and make sure we get it right in the center. And then we're going to break that constraint. We're gonna select all sides of this. And we are going to move this two millimeters. Just like we did on the other side, say okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut this into the face of this bottom with a chamfer, or sorry, with a with a uh, extrude. And we're gonna go. If we go two, that's too many. It's gonna go one point five, and we're gonna say okay. So now we've got that placed in there. If we were to close this lid, it would snap in. It wouldn't be super tight. We want it to be a tight lock-in-place lid. So we are going to grab this backside and make a chamfer. We're gonna pull this out 1.5. Now, if you want it to be super, super tight, 1.5, if you wanna leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room, I like 1.4 and that's gonna make it look really good as I'll show you here in just a second. So we'll say, okay, at 1.4, we're gonna turn this thing on its side and we're gonna put this back together just to make sure everything works good. We'll hit edit joint. Uh, we're going to close this. I know it's kind of going to look upside down. That's okay. We'll just make it work. Um, say okay. And now what I need to do is make sure that everything is lining up correctly. So we're going to do one more inspect section analysis. Grab this side. We're going to pull this through. Pull that a little bit too far. And it should fit in right there. And that's what we're looking to see. Does that fit? And you see this tiny little gap? The reason we have that is because we did 0.4 instead of 0.5 on the inside. That should snap in place and give us enough wiggle room in there that it's gonna look really good. So I'm gonna say, okay, we know that it works. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put our, put everything back where it needs to go. Uh, again, go to 180. And all that's left to do now is to Go ahead and save this as a print file and go from there. Now, if you want to design something to go inside here, that's totally up to you. If you want this to hold something, you can build that. This is going to print. It's going to function. It will open and close and it will look really nice when it snaps in place. You can impress all your friends with how awesome this is. If you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like this video, uh, share it with anybody you feel like might want to watch this. It's super awesome to learn how to print these things. I know this is uh, labeled as a beginner video. It's a little bit more than that. So thanks for sticking around to the end. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. And until then, we will see you guys with the next video.